All right, welcome back to the Dungeon of Doom podcast with Ben Raven and Corey Woods. <laughs> I was waiting for wow. the one up though, but I, I get up, it. I, I'm just, <laughs> I am pooped because what a game. I know, it really was. Uh, first things first, the Detroit Lions are heading back to the playoffs. They clinched their spot in the postseason tonight. First week time, 14. week 14, December 5th, December 6th, whatever it is. First week of December, absolutely madness. Uh, it's the first time they've gone back to the playoffs in back-to-back years for the first time since 1993 to 95. That's a long time. And uh, for a team that just keeps finding ways to win games, man, they pulled another rabbit out of a hat today. They got new guys on that defense starting and playing roles all over the place. And here they are finding a way to win 34-31. Another Jake Bates walk-off field goal here at Ford Field. And they sweep the Packers, man. They sweep them. Wow. I mean, back-to-back 12-win seasons. Yep. I mean, they won 11 straight games, first time in franchise history. Yeah, finally. And, <laughs> I mean, what more can you say about this team? They have just mm-hmm. find a different way to win each time. And the one thing that I can say about this, even when the Packers were, you know, in, in – Kevin getting great field position off yeah. of some off of one gamble and some other plays. You just never really felt that the Lions were truly out of this game. You just felt they were gonna find a way to just egg it out. And once again, Jake Bates just yeah. proves to be the Lions found their kicker. That's been the thing that's been they've been struggling for the past couple of seasons. You know, like you said a couple of, a couple of podcasts ago, the guy did not Jake Bates did not look <laughs> that great during training no, camp, no. but Hey, when the bright lights are on, this guy delivers. Um, he's what's that like? I want to say like it's like four game winning kicks at least. I know it's at least three. Yeah, it's three, he two at the buzzer, remember, three yeah, with the, the one in Minnesota, yeah. man. So yeah. pension for the clutch moments yeah. for sure. Not too bad for someone who didn't kick in college. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just to, just to, um another master class in my opinion by. Uh, Aaron Glenn mm-hmm. and that defense, just the fact that they were first off, they were they got a lot of pressure on Jordan Love quite early, t- and to be able to pull some of these guys up off basically off the street, <laughs> off of off of practice squads, and just piecing together this defense as they go. I mean, I was talking to a Meek Robertson after the game, and he just said like some of these guys didn't really know everything, but they just got dogs in them, and they just figured it out as they went. So, <laughs> yeah. um, it's. It's a nice, it's an impressive win, all things considered. I think if the Lions did drop this game, nobody would have faulted them no. off the fact that they have 13 guys on IR. But to come in here, have that defense play the way they did, and then the offense, and, and when it when it mattered most, the offense complements them. Impressive win. No, it was, it was, and uh, yeah, we're, we'll save the defense because that's a meaty conversation. Yeah. I, 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 the offense, man, Jared Goff tied an NFL record six players had at least five catches today six players had five catches today that is unbelievable Tim Patrick with two go-ahead touchdowns in the second half his first touchdown since 2021 his first touchdowns with the Lions he has been awesome Goff was awesome today I thought I mean it was really one of those games where you get downstairs you're ready to talk to Dan and wait for Goff and you're like no this guy was dealing like he He was was surgical that gets overused a lot with him, but he was. But the story of the game, other than that defense for me, four or five on fourth down, two touchdowns on fourth down. They go for it like madmen, like possessed madmen, man. The Packers are out of timeouts. Dan Campbell smelled freaking blood in the water. Goff, <laughs> Goff falls down, trips, still gets the handoff off. Montgomery goes seven yards. They kneel it, put Bates in position. They win the game. Dan Campbell tra- stays True to form. I asked him after the game, like when this team was three thirteen and one to twelve and one, you've remained true. What has helped you with that conviction? And maybe, yeah, I just he just said it's about the guys. I look in the guys' eyes. They know what I want. They know what they want. And Goff said it, it is the ultimate confidence boost when you have a coach that says we have a chance to win this game. We have a chance to keep the ball out of Green Bay's hands one last time. Let's go freaking do it behind that offensive line. And one thing that I've seen when, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that likes to scour social media and see what's going on. And I saw a lot of criticism for Dan Campbell making that call. Like, why did he go over right there? Why didn't they just go ahead and kick it? Why didn't they do this? And here's my thing. The Lions, <laughs> look, where, look where they're at. Last season, 12-5 and five, NFC Championship. 
this right now, week 14, they're 12 and one. They have gotten to this point of success by Dan Campbell staying true to form and doing what he feels is best to help improve this squad. And the thing about this is you've never seen this successful of a Lions team in your life. So how can you question him if what he's doing is working and produ- and given the results? No, it is. I mean, it's 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 been in their DNA since he took over. It's remained in their DNA since they took over. Sorry, we're we're it's two thirty in the morning as we're recording. People right. are trying to get out of here. So, but uh, it, I mean, it just really is. It just it's it's the utmost confidence in what got you this far. It's the confidence in the pieces to get the job done. And I, I just I, when they smell blood in the water, they go for it. Yes, they failed on that fourth and one from their own thirty yard line. Green Bay took advantage of that, scored, but four out of five times that that is crazy. They've Great stat pulled by our boss, Josh. 15 touchdowns on fourth down since Dan Campbell took over. That's tied for the most in the NFL. Uh, I, I, they aren't here without that mentality. Yep. Yes, it puts them in tough positions sometimes. But it also results in games like this, where you yeah. keep the ball out of Jordan Love's hands. You keep your banged up, makeshift defense off the field as much as possible. And that's what they did here. I mean, you just you know, also get it. You said it right there. They have a banged up defense. You didn't want to go ahead and get, Give them a give them that forty seconds, possibly good field position. You never know what you never know what can happen, but I mean, they took the game in their own hands, and you, again, you got to live and die with Dan Campbell's decisions. I mean, they got this is what got you to this point. You got to go ahead and roll with it. I I did think on that one fourth down, the one that they didn't convert, yeah. I thought that they should have went ahead and now I, th- I thought they should have you know got rid of it, but. That's neither here nor there. No, that's a completely sane thing to say. Like I was, uh, it was fourth and one, and I'm like, I know what they're going to do, right. but they're at their own thirty yard line, and I understand the desire to keep the defense off the field, but to put them on the short field after they already got beat on the short field after Goff's interception, yeah. like, man, that is that is so freaking gutsy. I think I said it. You live by the door, you, you sword, you die by the sword, and then you still win by the sword somehow. So, I mean, just, you got, they, they stay true to form, man. Yeah, they because, know who they because are. Because at that point, I'm thinking like, okay, Jordan Love is showing that he's having a, yeah. an inability to get the ball and drive down the field. Yeah. So don't go ahead and give him the short field because on that short field, they've been able to capitalize and score. So I'm thinking like, okay, give your defense a little bit of breather or give them some breathing room to be able to operate with. But I mean, again, when you, when it, when it works, it works. Yeah, I know. Goff finishes 32 of 41. That's awesome. Yeah. 41 passing attempts. That's just unbelievable. 283, three touchdowns, the one pick in the second half, obviously that was tough mistake he wants back every yeah. time he can get it but man jmo five catches laporta five catches patrick six catches two touchdowns st brown five catches montgomery five catches Gibbs six catches and a touchdown i i just th- this is not normal this is absolutely not normal and just even when <laughs> you got that big blunder on fourth down even when your quarterback trips over his own feet falls backward makes a handoff with one freaking knee on the ground the Lions still just find a way. I mean, uh, just they're they're they're, they're inevitable. <laughs> I, I mean, just, that's yeah. that's really the only thing you say about them. The Lions are inevitable. They mm-hmm. will. They have truly taken on the mentality of this coach. They just yeah. will not go down and, and unless it's zero zero. The Lions are not going down. They're going to figure out a way to win yeah. games and. What you're saying right now is yes, I, I I believe right now this is a Super Bowl caliber team. Oh, yeah. even even with the injuries because it, I like I said, we think we said this last week. <laughs> I need to see them lose before I can say okay, they need to tweak something. Yeah. Whatever whatever they're doing right now, everything they're doing right now is just working. Yeah, I didn't even take my own advice and say don't doubt this team until they give you a reason not to. And I thought the Packers were going to win this game. Yeah. I went on record saying yeah. that. I, I just 13 defensive players in IR. The NF, in the NFL there's not a team with more than 7 defensive players on IR. I know some of those guys were training camp guys and likely practice squad guys, but 13 defensive players on IR is 13 defensive players. They also didn't have DJ Reader. They didn't have Levi. They didn't have Jas Pascal. McNeil goes down for like five, six, seven yeah. longest minutes of my life waiting to see if he was going to come right. back. 
and I just the, the I know they only had one sack and it came on the freaking first snap of the game by Zadarius Smith, but the pressure was it was there. It they was made there. life hard for Love, even when they didn't get a hand on him. He had to make quick decisions, yeah. and I think he only had ten completions. I mean, ten or twelve completions, something like that. And uh, before we just I mean, until he had that one explosive in um, the yeah to start off the third uh, third quarter, yeah, Watson. He only had he only had thirty one passing yards in the first half. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I, I just yeah. Before we move to the defense, I just thought the offense did yeah, exactly yeah. what they needed to do. I, I mean, not an explosive first half, not really even an explosive second half. Just every time they had a window to take advantage of something, they hit it. They found a way. They leaned on Gibbs and Montgomery, not just as running backs, but in the passing yeah. game too. And a lot of people have been wondering where Sam Laporta is. Not the high volume stuff you were used to last year, but he was clutch today, made a couple of really tough plays. And I, I just thought, just with Goff as this leader – and playing as well as he is, and Dan Campbell, the way he is, I mean, I'm an aggressive-minded guy. Yeah. But Dan Campbell makes me look like the most conservative dude on the face of the earth with some of these calls. That that, that guy has, um, yeah, I'm not going to say what he has, but yeah. He saw <laughs> stones, <laughs> stones, I believe bones, Jared Goff said bones. after the game. That guy's got big stones bones. for a reason. We can say that. That was a quote. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, shoot, man, I just – and even the one where they failed, I loved how they set it up because Goff had done two or three quarterback sneaks in this game, which mm-hmm. is uncharacteristic. Packers defensive line pinched the line. The Lions tried to catch him sleeping with that pinch on the toss. It just didn't work out. But I, I just thought, all things considered, Ben Johnson, really nice play calling, dialed up the right stuff, yep. trusted his offensive line, trusted his quarterback. And on a day where the Lions needed their offense to score 34 points, on a day where they needed them to win the time of possession battle, they did exactly that. They did it on third down. They did it on fourth down. They gave away the one ball and the one turnover on downs, and they still, every time they got punched, they punched back. And that's exactly what they needed to do. Just a, just a heck of a performance all around. Um I thought the Sonic and Knuckles, they went ahead mm-hmm. and did their thing. And again, when we were staying on this offense, how great of an, ad- of an addition has Tim Patrick been? I mean, Josh Reynolds was like was yeah. Jared Goff's trusty target last year. I mean, well, since the since they, you know, they've since yeah. they've been here, mm-hmm. a guy that that third receiver that they've been, you know, counting on in those for those big, you know, yardages, big, big catches across the middle. And that big body receiver that they needed in Tim Patrick has stepped in this season and has just filled the road nicely and has made some clutch catches when needed. He has continued to get better. He has continued to play a bigger role. Uh, And when our subtext was blown up with questions about Josh Reynolds the other day, I was like, I love Josh. I love how he fits this offense. I love what he did in his three years here. But Tim Patrick. Don't sleep on Tim Patrick. His, this touchdown, this two touchdown game was coming for a while. Yeah. I mean, Goff has looked to him in some tough spots. And Dan Campbell said the message was simple today catch the ball, turn up field. Catch the ball, turn up field. That's exactly, I, I just, he, he is the vertical threat they needed. He is the vertical threat we envisioned that they needed when they came out of training camp, cutting all their vertical wide yeah, receivers. Right. I, I just, hats off Tim Patrick, hats off Jared Goff, Sonic and Knuckles. uh, They did what they needed to do today. And I just, it just, it, we we've said it many times. They keep finding new ways to win. This was another new way to win. I mean, this was a punch back and forth. You don't got a lot of your horses that you rely on and still, man, you get a big takeaway. You get a big stop. Perfect segue into the defense. The only trip into the red zone for either team that didn't result in a touchdown was that last field goal hold by the Lions defense. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Name two starters, quick, go. Just just kidding. No. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, Quan Alexander, Jamal Adams started today. Jonah Williams, Miles Adams, Pat O'Connor was a pregame captain. He's he, he was he got a press press a press conference after the game. I mean, what they're doing on defense is unheard of. I know they gave up 24 second half points. I know the offense needed to save the day, but what Aaron Glenn did by giving a 10 point lead in the first half, only giving up one touchdown. Just, just awesome. Just in the context of the game, just knowing that if when they had, when the, when the Packers had the short field, yes, they capitalized. Yep. The, the, you know, they put points to the board. It is what it is. But when they didn't have that short field, no. 
Lions defense just balled out. Yeah, there were two short field scores. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So I mean, you gotta you gotta get their hats off of that. One thing that I did not like is I thought that um, you know, Terry and Arno has got some pass interference calls this <laughs> this year, a lot of them. But that one he that they got on him really, I thought that was a cheap one. I, I really didn't. I thought that was I thought they could have swallowed that flag, but I mean, overall, just a just a you know gutsy performance by the defense. I thought the secondary played great. Mm-hmm. Um, even without Reader, um, they were just the, the that defensive line just made li- made life very very uncomfortable for Jordan Love. Uh, Zadarius Smith, just how great of an addition has he been? Just the, just the way he's been able to bring pressure off the edge and feels like he's been here forever. If he's again, it, it, again, when you look at the Rasheed Wallace comparison, people, <laughs> I know the guy just fits right into the locker room, and it's. I'm trying to find some more superlatives to say about this defense, but I mean, we're, no, I feel what, you. what can you say? The Packers go one of five on third down. They do not attempt a single fourth down. Lions get that big field goal hold late in the game. Just like you said, Zadarius, the sack on the first play of the game, really set a tone. The defense, like that D-line was getting pressure. I know Josh Jacobs had three touchdowns, Mm -hmm. but 66 yards. He had the one big run, I think 30, 32 yards. But like other than that, man. I mean, again, a lot of that that stuff was the short short field. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jacobs, it was a 19-yard run, 18 carries, 66 yards, three touchdowns. That's good. That is very good. Love finishes 12 of 20, 206 yards with one touchdown, gets sacked once. They just – they won the time of possession battle. They kept their defense off the field. Yeah, they won the time of possession. Wow, I didn't realize that by 13 minutes. Wow. That is that is exactly what – that's that's with a turnover on downs. That's with an interception. That is exactly what they needed to do today. And I, like I said, I know 24 second half points. I know 31 points. That's like one of the most they've allowed all season, but like they still like did not play bad. And that's madness. Quan Alexander's been here for like five Gosh. days and he started. David Long's been here for like 14 days on the main roster and he's played his third game. I, I just, there were, it's unbelievable. I unbelievable. Think, I'm telling you right now, there were a lot of, frustrated Packers players in the locker room as you guys know um after the games I go cover the opposing locker rooms and I mean similar to last week similar to last um week yeah it was a ghost town yeah um only thing I could say is just that guys are really frustrated about those fourth downs I mean Xavier McKinney it's no secret he's been a very talkative guy when it comes to the Lions (laughs) and he has he has some things to say, you know. Said that he felt that they really beat themselves, but he just said that he had to take it upon himself on those four of downs. He said we just can't continue to let that happen. And I mean, again, four out of five that is that is crazy efficiency. Yeah, and it was pretty chippy today. Yeah. I mean, shoot, you you were there for Lafleur too. I mean, he yeah. got into a moment with like a let's walk us through what happened in the pregame. You wrote about it, but this is just wild. Yeah, so uh, yeah, apparently during the pregame, when they were, you know, doing the lights were dim, you know, you have the the flat, the national, um, you know, the, the national yeah. anthem, you have the American flag holders out there, and apparently one of those guys just got into it with the floor to the point where the floor walked over to him, and you know, just pointed at him, and the guy just gets all more animated and just start doing the, the throat slashing gesture to where the the Packers staff. And the players had to intervene. The uh, oh boy, <laughs> and the uh, sorry. <laughs> good luck, Patrick. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Just like, and then after the, you know, after Lafleur went over to the fan, and you know the Packers staffers and the players intervened, the fan got even more animated to the point that the referees had to push him out the way. And then what happened after that? LaFleur came back over again yeah. and charged at the fan again. But LaFleur said he's never seen anything like that. He uh, called the Lions fan arrogant. He felt that the police, that it should have been more, a little bit more policed by the security to where the fans should not have been able to get that close to him. And you know what? I will kind of agree with that. That fan should not have been that close to getting his face. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, that was kind of weird. but Yeah. Yeah, I don't condone that. Don't do that. Yeah. And it kind of set the tone for a chippy game back and forth. Obviously, no crazy penalties or fights or anything yeah. like that. But there was a lot of John, a lot of slapping going around. I mean, 
Carlton Davis had to be separated from a guy a couple of times, but man, just, I don't know, man. It's just, I feel like an idiot for doubting this team. Like, no, and I didn't doubt them. I, I won't say you're an idiot because again, <laughs> like you said, it doesn't matter whether they're a practice squad or a starter. They yeah. had 13 guys down yeah. IR. They've been, they played a lot of games in a short yeah. span of time. Four and 18. Yeah. I mean, it's, if, if this, there were a game to be like, okay, this is the game that they drop. This would be the one with no DJ reader, no Taylor Decker. I mean, I know it's, it's, it was the defensive line losses for me. Like I, I have a lot of faith in the linebackers. I liked the guys they added. Yeah. I like the guys that have been here. Like I, and Jack Campbell's playing awesome. Like he deserves yeah. credit for holding things down, taking on the green dot, organizing things in the huddle with guys that he's just met in the last week. But just, it was the defensive line that concerned me. I mean, reader. Anzarike, yeah. Pascal, on top of the guys that are already out, you know, Aiden Hutchinson, Marcus Davenport, Derek Barnes is the sandbacker. Then, then the Aleem scared during the Yeah, game, exactly. So I mean, you got Pat O'Connor playing nose tackle. You got Broderick Martin making his season debut. Uh, just Elquadine Muhammad. How good has he been? He has been awesome. Like, he really has been awesome. Like, he is kind of like – I don't want to compare him to Marcus Davenport, but like he's got that bull power rush mentality that reminds me of that style. And it's like, oh, I see what they liked in this guy. Like I know they had him in New Orleans when Glenn and Campbell was there and they clearly saw those flashes because they have gotten so much out of that guy. It's unbelievable. Like honestly, guys, Miles Adams and Jonah Williams started. Quan Alexander, Jamal Adams started. Like I know they... It's, that's, it's unheard of. He just got here on what, on what, Sunday? Yeah, yeah. All, I just, all of them got all of those guys that Ben just named, they arrived on Sunday and participated in walkthroughs on Monday. Yeah. Tuesday was what, another practice and Wednesday off. Yeah. No, and that's why we're talking about Aaron Glenn the way we are right here because they had to talk about shortening the playbook, simplifying everything everything you've got a new linebacker with the green dot i know jack campbell's done it before but it's still a change from yeah. alex anzalone being that guy leading the show so not only is it new faces everywhere it's a new green dot wearer uh and it's a simplified playbook but they told those guys this is how we want to play this is how we want you to do this this is what's expected to you go play fast go play hard go hit <laughs> get bodies on the ball and I mean, it didn't always work, but it did enough today, and it came up clutch. I mean, like you said, I thought the secondary was pretty good, too. Like, that call on Arnold, I didn't really love it too much. His 10th penalty of the year, he's tied for second in that department. It's Detroit's 17th defensive pass interference call. That leads the NFL. And I know Davis got beat on the 59-yarder, and I know they got beat here and there, but it they just – it's resiliency – it's grit. It's good freaking coaching, man. Yeah. I mean, Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn, we've been talking about it for two years. These guys are freaking head coaches. In the and making. the Lions have the luxury of being in their fourth season with these guys in these roles. And we haven't even talked about the Detroit Lions like clinching the playoffs outside of like one line. That's in the, the that's the, <laughs> the Lions clinched the playoffs. Like nobody gives a crap. <laughs> like, yeah, next. Like <laughs> Uh, that's, that's, that's essentially it. Okay, are they, are they going to win the division? Are they going to clinch number one? Like their their aspirations right now are not even playoffs. They feel like playoffs are in the bag for them right now. They're looking, they're eyeing number one seed yeah. to have that home field advantage, yeah. so that when when the road to the Super Bowl starts, it has to start coming through Detroit right here. And I mean, this win, NFC win, undefeated in the division still. This is how you clear that path to the number one seed. This is how you clear that path to back-to-back -to -back division titles. I just wrote a headline, like, Lions celebrate playoffs with golf clap mentality. Yeah. That's ex Dan Campbell said he didn't even address it in his speech to the players because he's like, if I did, I totally forgot about it. But if I did, they'd just be like, okay, cool. And I'm like, man, that is, that is, that is realizing the expectations internally, externally, and just knowing that you got the horses to do whatever the hell you want to do. And the thing is, this is not a mindset. This is a mindset that started in early. Absolutely. Well, not, well, not early. It started in late January in that NFC championship loss. Yeah. They still have that bitter taste, and they've been carrying it 
ever since. And again, I said it before on the podcast, I talked to a few players, yeah. some of them that are not here now, but I talked to a few players <laughs> at, at training camp, and they said, look, it's it's all business right now. Yeah. We're 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 not happy. And one thing I do want to say to Lions fans, I said earlier today, <laughs> I know some Lions fans are worried about an Eagles team coming through here yeah. or where the, the Lions have to go go out to Philly. Hey, don't worry about that right now. Look, focus on the game yeah. at a time because if the Lions don't win divi- their division, I mean, Philly's going to do what Philly's going to do. These other teams going to do what, they, what they're going to do. Lions have to focus on winning the division. Right now, they improved to four and zero in the oh. NFC North in a very pivotal game and pivotal, very pivotal. I mean, you have forced the Packers into making it the playoffs in another way. Yeah, you have given yourself another pad on the Minnesota Vikings, who have ten wins, and those Eagles, winners of eight straight, I believe. You need every win in the NFC nor in the NFC to keep them at bay. Yeah, they play the Panthers this weekend. The Eagles are probably going to win again. Yeah. So, <laughs> But, like, even if the Eagles win this weekend, I think that New York Times, like, playoff calculator still has the Lions with an 80% chance of getting the number one seed. That's how big this win was today because I think if they lost, that goes down to, like, 38% or something like that. And it's just now they now they get to go into a mini bye weekend. The players get a couple of days off. The coaches even get a chance to catch their breath. That's going to be huge. Because I just – Based on the tea leaves and what's been said, I would expect Decker back. I would expect Reader back. I think Pascal's got a good chance. Anzarike sounds like he's got maybe a longer timeline, but guess what? He's not on injured reserve. And the it fact was. that that hasn't happened is a very good sign. So winning this game shorthanded without your starting left tackle against a very talented Packers defense that we have not talked about just because the Lions handled their freaking business. Yeah. I, I just, it's impressive. And in about 10, 11 days, whatever it is, next Sunday, the Lions welcome one of the AFC's best teams, Buffalo Bills. What some are saying might be a Super Bowl potential matchup. Absolutely it is. I mean, absolutely it is. I cannot wait for that. But this win in the NFC takes a little of that heat off of that game because if you're going to pick a game to lose, you want to do it to an AFC team. Yeah. So, and that I'm not – Trying to say that, oh, blah, 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 they're going to overlook that game. But like this game right freaking here, Dan Campbell said it. He said, I told Jared Goff, you will, you have played so many games in this league, made a Super Bowl. You will never forget this win. You will never forget tonight. I mean, how could you? How, I mean, no. I mean, it's, it's a, it, was a, it was a history making game, yeah. even for Goff. Golf made golf made Lions history tonight as well. So you probably won't forget it for that because yeah, golf is now the first Lions quarterback to t- throw 25 touchdowns in three consecutive seasons. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. The Detroit Lions are 12 and one. They are in the playoffs. They have won 11 in a row. Snapping first time ever. Yeah, first time ever. Snapping that 1934 team's record. Unfreaking believable. You blow a 10 point lead. You got to crawl back and fight for every freaking inch you get in the second half. They win 34 31. Jake Bates, another walk off winner. Hats off Dan Campbell, Jared Goff, Aaron Glenn, and Ben Johnson in that offensive line, man. They are the foundation of this team. And when this team gets its back against the wall, they lean on that foundation. Other teams in this city, they take the word grit and they try to just <laughs> adopt it and, and, and um, make it like, you know, they're, they're a buzzword. Yeah. For the Lions, it's not a buzzword. It's a reality. Yeah. This, this team is built on grit, and, I mean, they're, 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 they're riding it to each, each – just think about this. Each year since they've brought that grit culture to yeah. the Detroit Lions – They've gotten better each season. Yeah. Yep. I'm sitting here right now. I'm looking at the corner of Ford Field where it used to say dagger time. And they tried to (laughs) – I'm not even trying to be funny. I know it is funny. But uh, they tried to, like, force a slogan, a force a mentality. I'll leave it with this. Dan Campbell and these Detroit Lions continue to turn coach speak, athlete speak, and cliches into reality. And the thing is – I believe I can't remember who said it. I can't remember what player said it, but he said that players in the locker room know when a coach is not really about what he's saying. Absolutely. When we, that he doesn't believe what he's saying. These guys 
pretty much spit back Dan Campbell isms. Yes. So it's it they believe it. Whether you whether whatever no matter what you think about this team, they believe everything that Dan Campbell and his staff is teaching them, coaching them, telling them, and now these the confidence is on another level with this team. I've 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 never seen it like this no. before ever. No, nobody has. <laughs> I mean, no, nobody has. I mean, yeah. last year it was like, oh, my dad remembers this. No, the last time this happened was 1934. Uh, <laughs> so it's just, uh, I mean, they're the best team in the NFL. They are the Super Bowl favorites, in my opinion. And in a year with crazy expectations, sky high. Dan Campbell is the NFL coach of the year, in my opinion. But it, what he's it, 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 it has to be. I, I just like I know they were expected to be this good, but they're twelve and one. What they're they lost Aiden Hutchinson, who was on path for a generationally good season, and they're still here. Twelve and one. They host the Buffalo Bills next weekend. Grab yourself a couple days off. Enjoy football this weekend. I'm gonna head north to Cadillac and kick back <laughs> for a couple days, and we'll be back. But uh. Yeah, check out our subtext insider texting program, mlive.com slash lions. They're 12 and one, baby. Uh, they, they are not slowing down. And I will, I know I called myself an idiot earlier for picking the Packers. And you know what? I'm going to stick with that. I was an idiot. I'm done <laughs> out in this team, even in the most understandable ways possible, missing 13 defensive players and all your defensive linemen and linebackers. They have continued to show, don't doubt us, doubt us at your own peril. And Man, they just keep going. I mean, hey, I'll, I'll leave. I'll say this last piece. It's you walked into these games, you know, a couple of years ago, wondering, okay, you're hoping they can win. You're wondering how, you're wondering what, what's the pathway to a win. Now you're going to these Lions games like, what way are they going to decide to win? Yeah. Yep. It's a difference.